How's it going, YouTube? Navy Sooner here. So today I am in my new house. I moved down to the Waco area and I'm getting ready to start school at University of Mary Harden Baylor. That's why I'm repping the hat. Uh, Y'all know that I'm a Sooner fan, but Mary Harden Baylor is a Division III school and they have won two out of the last three national titles and they've been to all three of the last three national title games for NCAA Division III. So I'm getting to watch some pretty good football here and in Oklahoma, which I have season tickets. Now, I don't have my studio up and ready yet, but I wanted to make a video on my latest uh, gun that we are going to be doing a review on. And that gun is the Daniel Defense M4 V7. I've got a couple of things added on to it. Um, I put a picture of it nice and slick whenever I got it over on my Instagram account which is also Navy Sooner. So let's dive into this Daniel Defense M4V7. I'm not actually doing a review right now, I'm just doing an overview of how, what it is, and what I think of it right out of the box, basically. Haven't shot it yet, so it can't be reviewed. Um, there, this is the M4V7, there are different versions. The V7 has this M-Lock, um, handguard on it there you can get it with quad rail you can get it with key mod you can get it with a um, front sight post uh, as the gas block and with uh, what quad rail all the way around but the v7 is the in lock handguard it's very lightweight um, it's one of my lightest guns Believe it or not, it's not nearly as light as my Palmetto State Armory with the FN barrel. Um, but this gun, I don't believe they sell, or they don't sell this upper anymore. They sell it with a Geisley rail on it, so that's going to add some weight to it. But if you can find one without the Geisley rail, it's pretty light. The trigger is a single stage trigger, uh, pretty mil specky, uh, if you ask me. Uh, except for there's this really weird creep right before you pull for being a single stage trigger it's almost the second stage but let's pull the trigger and it feels very crisp once you hit the wall and you pull it so let's reset it and really 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 good reset it clicks pretty good still really mil specky trigger um, I'm thinking about changing the trigger out. We'll see after I shoot, put a couple rounds through it. Uh, and yeah, that the one thing that's really weird to me is that take up. Um, the closest gun I have that is a mil spec gun, uh, mil spec trigger, is this Palmetto. It's got their nickel boron uh, trigger in it, but let's see here. If there's no take up whatsoever. It's got J and G. Um, springs in it as well. All right, the barrel on the Daniel Defense M4 V7 is a cold hammer forged one and seven twist 556 16 inch barrel. You can get them in other lengths, um, but this one is 16 inches. I chose 16 inches because I'm kind of worried about the whole pistol thing, and I don't. I want something that's long enough that I can not have to worry about right now because I don't see a band coming but I'm worried about the whole pistol brace thing that they're talking about so that's why I got the 16 inch it's got a ding the Daniel Defense um, flash hider on it enhanced flash hider I'm sure it works great I've seen in videos it works great I'm probably not gonna use this uh, flash hider though this this muzzle device I'm still trying to figure out if I like the um, Surefire or if I like the um, Sons of Liberty Gunworks Knox. So we'll see, but that's probably going to get changed. With this gun, the safety that comes on it is an ambi safety, but I removed the safety lever on this side because. Whenever I actuate it, I need to move my 
hand out or else it's going to catch it. So that's a reason that I removed it. It's, it's, it's the same length as the regular as the regular safety. Now I really wish they would have made it shorter because there are other ones that are shorter uh, on the amb on this side of the gun and they don't dig into your finger when you're ma manipulating the safety selector. But uh, the say nothing special once you take that ambi off. I'm probably going to take a dremel to it and cut it down and reshape it and then put it back on there. The handguard is obviously m -lock. It's 14 inch MFR handguard. It's got seven positions for m -lock all the way around wherever you want to go. And it's got Picatinny rail all the way down it that are all, it's all T marked and everything. Uh, there is an anti-rotation tabs on it right here and it is rock solid. This thing is not going anywhere. I have seen, I think none fancy, his was messed up for some reason. I don't know how that happened, especially with these anti-rotation tabs on it. I don't see how that could go anywhere. But if you're wanting to run a PEC-15 or some kind of laser on the end of your gun, uh, this is going to be rock solid. You, you're not going to worry about losing zero. But I don't really shoot night vision. I have a night vision scope that I use when I go hog hunting. But other than that, I don't, I don't have, I don't have night vision capability and IR, and I don't really want to use a laser. But uh, put a PEC 15 on there, no problem, and you're not going to worry about losing zero. The only issue I have, I don't know if you can see here, but there is a gap between the receiver and the handguard. That is pretty much the standard for all Daniel Defense rifles I've noticed with uh, at least in the at least in the M4 variant and yeah I don't I don't like that there's that much there's so much of a gap in there stuff could get in there um, I don't have anything mounted over it so that doesn't really matter but I'm just worried about the debris getting in there and I mean, for how much this gun is, they sure did take a couple of shortcuts. All right, so the buttstock and the hand, or in the pistol grip, all have these this Daniel Defense rubber uh, stuff on it. I've heard that it can be pretty bad on beards, but I haven't shot it yet. We'll find out. And if it is, more than likely going to take the buttstock off. I kind of like the angle of the pistol grip. A lot of people don't like the pistol grip because I don't know why. They think it's ugly or they don't like it, but I mean, it works fine for me. Uh, we'll find out when I shoot, like I said. And the charging handle, it says it directs gases up and away from the face because Daniel Defense is very known for being, having an overgassed system. But the issue is, even if it does shoot gases away from the face when it is suppressed. I'm not going to suppress, I'm probably not going to suppress it, I don't have a suppressor, but even if it does do that, this charging handle is no spec charging handle. Yet another thing that I think Daniel Defense skipped, skimped on, I mean, MSRP is $1,700. Uh, I got this for $1,600, little over $1,600 at Cabela's. Come on, charging handle like that, nah. And then the gas block is pinned. It's nice and pinned, so you don't have to worry about it walking on you. Uh, this is the only gun that I have that has, or this is the only AR that I have that is pinned at the gas block. And it is a mid-length gas system. Um, also, we got a plastic dust cover here. Uh, there's multiple reasons that they say that they did it. Light, uh, weight saving, and they said that the no spec dust covers bend. I don't know, it's a dust cover. If it breaks, it breaks. I'll change it out, but we'll see. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with that. How I have this set up is I have a Streamlight ProTac XL, oh, HLX on here uh, with pressure pad. And then my scope that I'm using is the 
primary arms, one to six, uh, first focal plane scope with the ACSS Raptor uh, uh, sighting system in it. I'm sorry, reticle. ACSS Raptor reticle system is in it. We will see how this goes. I like the scope so far, and um, I like primary arm scopes anyways. So we'll see how that works out for it. And that is my overview of the Daniel Defense Rifle. Looks good, haven't shot it yet. Skimped on a couple of things. We'll see, $1,600 gun. It better be a damn good gun. All right, maybe sooner out.